All right, so good evening. My name is Carolyn Acreage. I'm the uh, program director for the Walton County School District 21st Century Nita and Lowey Community Learning Centers. And um, we've got programs in six elementary schools in our county, all three middle schools, and also at Monroe Area High. Um, tonight, we've got the pleasure of, of having a guest with us, Celeste Cannon. She's the curriculum director for our sixth through 12th grade and CTAE programs. Um, she's going to share some information with us on high demand careers and some different paths to careers and generally just some information on how we can get our students to become successful young adults and independent of their parents. So, um, as we go through the night, if you, um, will stay muted and, and keep your, um, video off, sometimes that makes it a little bit easier on the bandwidth and I'll do the same. I'll, I'll mute myself and, and turn my video off. But then if you have a question, you can use the chat box feature. That's probably the best way to do it. If you use the raise your hand feature, we may not see it. But, um, you know, you're welcome to unmute when you have a question. But if you throw it in the chat box, then we can call on you um, and, and go about it that way. So, Celeste, thank you so much for sharing with us tonight. Thank you, Carolyn. Um, I'm very happy to be here and to share this information with you all because I think that this is um, one of the things that's the most important to all of us as parents. We, we tend to think of um, graduation as that's the point at which we're kind of done raising our kids. But if we don't look, about, look to education as having the purpose of launching students into a career, then they're still at home with us. So usually I start this presentation when I do it in, in person by asking all the parents in the room who want their children to still be living with them and completely financially dependent on them at age 30 to stand up. And nobody ever stands up. In fact, people usually sink lower to make it very clear that they don't want that. So that's the purpose of the presentation tonight. I'm gonna share my screen. And we will jump right in. Oops, that's not what I wanted to do. Hang on. There we go. Carolyn, can you see that? Yes. yes. Okay, good. Thank you. All right, so um, we wanna always begin with the end in mind. And when I say begin, I mean from very early childhood, um, talking about careers and thinking about the ways that our children's natural talents and abilities overlap with possible jobs. Um, when you take your children to the World of Coke Museum or on vacation in Florida, noticing the people that are working at these places and asking questions about how they got those jobs. When you go to the doctor's office or a hospital, it's not just doctors and nurses that work there, it's lots of other titles that require lots of other credentials to get those positions. So what we really want for all of our children when they become adults is some version of this um, graphic that you see on your screen not graduation, we want them on the right side of the screen. We want their version of a happy, well-adjusted life doing something that they love and being able to pay for all the things that they want themselves. And, you know, no judgment, no matter what it is that they envision for their lives, we want to help them get that and, and be able to pay for it. So we used to think of um, education, specifically high school, as having two tracks. There's the career track for students who are not going to college and the college track for students who plan to go to college. But this is very flawed thinking because what it implies is that we want some kids to go to college but not have a career. At some point, college ready has to be career ready. We want all of our students to have careers. And I'm gonna share with you in this presentation some ways that Walton County takes that very seriously. So um, there are some big changes that have happened in higher education and in the labor market landscape over the past 30 to 50 years 
that have resulted in what you see here in this um, graphic. Students get their diplomas, high school diploma or college diploma, and then they go straight to unemployment because there was no um, thinking about where that credential, that high school diploma or a certificate or a college degree is going to land in a job. I'll give you an example. Um, my example is Stephanie. Um, Stephanie is um, a member of my family and um, she's a good bit younger than me, about 20 years younger than me. And she was an excellent high school student. She got great grades. Um, she did what many kids did back then, the mass migration from Georgia to Colorado. She got into the University of Colorado at Boulder. That was her dream. She went out there and um, her parents paid outrageously expensive um, out-of-state tuition. And she got really good grades at the University of Colorado. She finished her degree in about four and a half years. Five years on average is typical to get a four-year degree. And um, after she graduated, she continued waiting tables and keeping books for a restaurant and wondering what the heck happened because she majored in anthropology. Anthropology was very interesting to her, but she was shocked to discover that there wasn't an anthropology building on every corner with a help wanted sign out. It was a poor choice. She went back to school, took on more student loan debt than she had originally with her anthropology degree and got a degree in nursing. She utilized her gift with world languages to also add some credentials in Spanish. And she now is a wildly successful pediatric nurse in an area with a high Spanish speaking population. All this could have been avoided with good career development starting in elementary school or even earlier. So there are two fundamental changes that make the just go to college approach to emptying the nest no longer work. And those are the rising costs of post-secondary education and then that changing um, labor market landscape. So let's look at the first one. Um, what you see here is a chart of current costs, and this is in-state costs to attend these schools. And this is just a sampling. This isn't every school in Georgia. But if this list doesn't shock you, um, yeah, I don't know what would. This When I got to the jumping off point with my boys, they are now 23 and 27. Um, they got lots of career development at home, bless their hearts, and they did not have student loan debt, and they are both gainfully employed, doing their own thing, paying their own way, and have been for quite some time. When I got to that jumping off place with them and started to look at the cost of college, I was blown away. It is um, a different issue that we won't talk about too much here, that taxpayers in this state who have always done what they're supposed to do can no longer afford to send their children to a state school without taking on crippling debt. And you might say, well, my kid's gonna get Hope Scholarship, got good grades. You can see in the column to the far right, Hope Scholarship used to pay a substantial amount of college costs, it no longer does, because college costs have far outpaced the amount of lottery revenue that comes in. So the HOPE scholarship is just a drop in the bucket. Here are some other schools. You'll notice here, Athens Technical College and Gwinnett Technical College are much less expensive, but they don't have the mandatory fees and room and board costs that um, some of the state universities have. And then in the far right column, you see where I put for Hope Scholarship depends on the program. There are special technical college grants that pay differing amounts depending on the program. And it is possible to go to a technical college for free or nearly free, depending on the program that you choose. And we'll look at that in more detail a little bit later. The rest of the programs that you see on this list are programs that you don't pay them to give you the education. They pay you to get training with the exception of that Gupton Jones College of Funerary Services. Um, Atlanta Electrical Contractors Association apprenticeship program is one of the worst kept secrets, I think, in education. They will take an 18 year old and start paying them $23,000 a year plus benefits at 18. They have to pass a simple, quick test and they have to pass a drug test. They get a raise every year of the five year apprenticeship program 
And then they typically leave the program making upwards of $75,000 a year. But in the meantime, they've been able to pay for their own apartment, um, make their own truck payment, whatever it is they want to do. So these are some things to consider. Here are some private colleges in the cost, and these are truly outrageous. Um, the Embry University is almost $70,000 a year. Hope does pay a portion of tuition at Emory and at Mercer and at Young Harris, but only a very small portion. Um, Vanderbilt, Columbia, and Furman are also popular places that our students like to, to seek out to go to school, but because those are out of state, Hope Scholarship doesn't apply at all. So student loan debt is, um, I know you all have heard about it. Um, you probably have family members that have a lot of student loan debt. You have your own personal stories. So I will just share with you that the average current student loan debt for an individual is over $37,000. And what's interesting is that um, many students who enter the university system of Georgia do not leave with a degree. Only about 60% of those who enter the University System of Georgia get a bachelor's degree within six years. One reason may be that three out of 10 who start with the Hope Scholarship do not keep it the whole time. It's also interesting that about 30% of people with post-secondary, meaning after high school, licenses or certificates, in other words, credentials short of an associate's degree, earn more than the average bachelor's degree recipient. But we're still pushing that narrative that if you just go to college and do something, you'll be better off than if you don't go to college and get that four-year degree. And that's just not true. We're having to walk that back. All right, so let's talk about the skills gap just a little bit. Um, there's a report that any of you can access and read on your own. It's called Pathways to Prosperity, excuse me, Pathways to Prosperity. And it was published in February of 2011 by Harvard University. To find that, just type in a Google search, Pathways to Prosperity, Harvard, and it will come up. It's a long document, but it makes very clear that the labor market landscape has changed dramatically. For example, in 1973, about 72% of all jobs required a high school diploma or less. About 10% of jobs in 73 required a two-year degree, and about 20% of all jobs required a bachelor's or a graduate degree. By 2007, about 45% of all jobs required a high school diploma or less. That's compared to 72% in 1973. But by 2007, about 25% of all jobs required a bachelor's degree didn't change much. The bachelor's degree part did not change much between 73 and 2007. The big change is in those mid-level skill jobs. In 2007, 30% of all jobs required either a two-year degree or a specialized training certificate. And that's, I think, where we're um, kind of missing the boat when we're preparing our students for the world of work. So the world of work looks like this now. Um, the kinds of, of jobs that are in demand that are not getting filled are things like um, air, uh, air traffic controllers and um, aircraft avionics technicians and commercial wiring specialists, funeral directors even, um, software technology specialists, logistics specialists, welders, phlebotomists. And these are types of jobs that require a specific certificate not necessarily a degree, but we're sending our students to college to get degrees in things like anthropology and psychology and even biology. And then they, they realize they can't even teach high school biology without a certificate. It's the certificate that matters in many cases. Here are some more examples of those mid-skill level jobs where there are lots of job openings that are going unfilled because we're sending our kids to four-year colleges to do things where they're not even sure where the job exists on the other end. So career awareness begins on the elementary grades and in Walton County, we know that when you ask a five or a six-year-old to name all of the careers that they can think of, 
they will typically say firefighter, police officer, teacher, maybe doctor, nurse, dentist, maybe waiter or waitress. And that's about it. That's about all they know. Sadly, when you ask a 14 or a 15 year old the same question, they'll give the same answer. So we do some career awareness lessons beginning in the elementary school to help develop our young students' vocabularies for describing careers. It's impossible for them to imagine themselves as an avionics technician when they have no idea what that is, or an underwater welder or phlebotomist. We want them to gain that language and kind of have an image in their minds of what that job looks like. And that's all we do in elementary, just some exploration to help expand their thinking about what it's possible for them to be when they grow up. In middle school, students begin to know more about who they are. They become more self-aware and they understand what they're talented at and what they're not so good at, which subjects, subjects in school they really love and which ones not so much. And so we do career interest inventories beginning in the sixth grade. We do these in sixth, seventh and eighth grade. And then they leave middle school with an individual graduation plan that is very flexible that we do intend to change if they want it to um, throughout high school. <clears throat> high school students participate in a variety of advisement activities. They meet in advisement anywhere from once a week to once a month, depending on which high school and where they are in their advisement program. And, um, they're exploring careers, they're choosing career pathways, they're participating in work-based learning. High school is the time to pick a major and change it. College is not the time to pick a major and change it. Changing your major in college costs $25,000 a year or more. The time to do that is in high school. Here are some pathways that we offer in Walton County. And I mentioned earlier that we really have worked hard to modernize our pathways and our pathways, career pathways are designed for all students, not for career students versus college students. So you can see in this list, there's computer science. And this is a pathway for students who want to get a certificate to be a, um, a technology support specialist or a software specialist or a data entry specialist, or they may want to be a programmer working in a biotech field or at Standard, Standard Color Corporation in Social Circle. We have engineering and technology. That's the whole gamut, anything and everything under the umbrella of engineering and technology. Web and digital design, um, I'll let you read the rest of that list for yourself. And the pathways do differ a little bit from school to school. Those are the ones at Loganville. These are the pathways at Monroe Area High School. You'll see many of them are the same, but there are a few that are different. Air Force JROTC is at Monroe Area High School, but students from all three high schools can participate in that one. And these are the pathways at Walnut Grove High School. We also have work-based learning. So the idea is that a student would come to high school and have some general idea of what they wanna do for a living, maybe not the exact job, but at least the field that they wanna go into. Like maybe they, they know that they really like solving problems where they use their hands and they tinker with things, but they're not sure what exactly. So that student might choose to participate in the engineering pathway. And they get into the first course of the engineering pathway and then they go, you know, this really isn't for me after all. I think I want to switch to that sports medicine pathway or the therapeutic services nursing pathway. That's fine. High school's the time to do that. By the time they get to be, especially on block schedule, a junior in high school, they've had the opportunity to complete at least one entire pathway, possibly more. And then we want them to do some work-based learning. So, um, there are a lot of post-secondary training programs that require a minimum number of hours on a work site before you can ever even get admitted to them. So um, anything from a licensed practical nurse to an RN or a physical therapist, you're not considered for admission to any of those professional programs unless you've had clinical experience in a work setting, some engineering degree programs as well. So we encourage students 
to once they've completed a pathway, then try their hand at some work-based learning. Go actually work in the field while you're in high school. Instead of getting a job working in retail, unless retail happens to be what you want to do for a living, or um, getting a job at a fast food place, get a job in the field that you're seeking permanent um, terminal employment and see if you really do like it and get a better feel for if working in a hospital setting is a good fit for you. Work experience in the career field also gives those applicants, those scholarship applicants, an edge. And it helps students just to know if they've chosen the right path or if they should make a change before they start paying for a credential. We also have dual enrollment at our disposal. 100% free college is available through dual enrollment for 11th and 12th graders for core academic university system courses or for 10th through 12th graders for CTAE pathway aligned technical college courses. This is capped at 30 semester hours, which is equivalent to the freshman year, or the first year of a degree program or a certificate program. Some certificate programs at technical colleges can be completed altogether within those 30 semester paid hours. All of the courses that are taken at the college for dual enrollment credit count as a credit toward high school graduation. All right, I have some tips for you and then we'll move to questions. So tip number one is with your children, ask them the right questions early and often. The right question is not where do you wanna to go to college? And we've really gotten that wrong and I have to lay some of the blame for that on um, the educator profession um, we have sold very successfully this um, false narrative that if you just go to college and get a degree in anything, you will be better off than if you didn't. And as we've, we've seen in this presentation, things have changed too much for that to be true anymore. And I'm not anti-college, but we've got to answer these first questions first. And you see in the, the graphic there, the cart is before the horse. You know, when we go on vacation, we don't um, just wake up one day and go get in the car and start driving. And when we get there and go, well, I didn't pack anything and um, I didn't know it would be this cold here or this warm here. We start planning a vacation by deciding maybe what our budget is or we figure out where we want to go that we've never been before or where we want to go that we have been before. And then we start making reservations and preparing for the trip and we pack appropriately for it. When we ask our students first, where do you wanna to go to college? Have you taken the SAT? Are you doing what you need to get into college? Those questions are out of order. We've gotta ask them first, what do you wanna be when you grow up? What do you love doing so much that you lose track of time while doing it? What are your favorite subjects in school, your least favorite, what are your hobbies? And then where do those answers overlap with a career? This is where we have to start. And then those questions make the other questions like, do I take dual enrollment or an AP course? Which pathway do I choose? Those questions are asked and answered once we've answered those first ones. Tip number two, every student should know the job or the career field into which they are seeking entry before choosing any college or training program. Again, that's the cart before the horse. When you choose the college and then you figure you'll figure out what you're gonna do for a living after you get there and maybe even after you get a degree or after you drop out, you see the problem with that. So I always say, don't even go. Don't go to college if you have no idea what job you're seeking on the other end of it. Wait and get some work experience, do some career exploration, then choose your credential, then choose your college. Um, tip number three, explore state schools that are below the NAT line. This is a big one. And this is how, um, you know, one, one way that, that my sons did so well and didn't have a lot of student loan debt to deal with. Um, they did choose colleges below the NAT line. For whatever reason, nobody wants to go to school or much live in South Georgia. Many of us may have families that are from South and Central Georgia, and um, we're here because someone in our family or ourselves chose to move out of that environment. Um, my son, John, went to Georgia Southwestern 
in America's Georgia, and my son Andrew went to the aviation campus of Middle Georgia in Eastman, Georgia. And um, what's interesting about this is that many schools in Central and South Georgia offer scholarships that are not offered to students attending North Georgia schools. In other words, a student who has the GPA and the SAT score to get into the University of Georgia could have a full ride at Georgia Southwestern or Middle Georgia or one of many other colleges that are below the NAT line. So explore that. Everybody wants to go to Kennesaw or Georgia Tech or the University of Georgia or the University of North Georgia, but those are the most expensive state schools. Um, Georgia College in Milledgeville used to be very affordable, but it's right up there with the University of Georgia in cost now, and it is above the NAT line. Tip number four, consider HOPE career grant programs. I've provided a link in this presentation and we will post this presentation. I'm gonna stop sharing my screen um, so that I can show you, because I've got it in my hand here. So HOPE career grant, this is the list of HOPE career grant programs and it's pages and pages. And the state of Georgia has done something with this that I think is brilliant. We have lots of industries, including all the manufacturing industries that are in and around Walton County that have critical shortages of workers. Sorry. And um, the state of Georgia decided that one way to tackle that problem, you know, we've got jobs where, you know, a kid can walk right into them after six months at a technical college making $50,000, $60,000 a year, but nobody's going to those jobs. They're not getting that credential that just you can do in six months at Athens Tech because they don't know about them, because they're, they're not the high, they don't have the high status appeal that going to the university has, even though you go to the university and you end up with such crippling student loan debt that you can't afford a house until you're 30. That's typical. So what the state of Georgia did was develop this HOPE career grant list. So all of these credentials are for jobs where there's a critical need. And if you choose any of these programs, it is either 100% free or nearly free. Now that's not every technical college program, it's only the HOPE career grant programs that are in this list. So that is the end of my presentation. I'm very interested in knowing if anybody has any questions. Um, and I will put in the chat box my contact information in my office in case anybody wants to call me and chat about individual situations. There we go. You must have answered all the questions. Okay. I know I learn something new every time I hear you talk about this. Um, with one student at Kennesaw majoring in architecture and another student at West Georgia majoring in let's go to class and, you know, figure out what we want to do with our life still. I mean, we think MIS, but is that really the direction we're going? Um, it's, it's something that it's empowering to have that information ahead of time and, and the conversations we should be having with our, with our personal children right? Our young adults. And, and earlier, if you've got that opportunity, if you've got a, an elementary student or a um, middle school student, that is the time to start thinking about those careers. So, yes. Alicia says, yes, that she wish she knew this info earlier. Thank you for the links and info. For posting Thank that. you, Alicia. All right, so, well, thank you so much. And we will post this recording online. So if those of you that, that were able to, you know, pop in and join us live tonight, if you wanna share that with friends, um, we're gonna take the recording and put it out there so that others can, can hear some of this information as well. And thank you so much, Celeste, for, for sharing with us tonight. Thank you, good night, y'all. Good night, everybody.